telling the truth or are we gonna lie? What are we gonna do? When I was in school there, and it was in the end of the 80s, so it was, what, 1989. That was a good time in L.A. And I wish I took more advantage of it. Knowing now what historical things were going on there in the clubs as far as rock bands were. And we're hitting oh, God. 40 years of Pyromania, 41 years of Motley Crue. Yep. We've got 40 years of Bon Jovi, wow. 40 years of Def Leppard, you know, 50 years mm. of Kiss. 50 <laughs> years of Kiss. So Bon Jovi just came out with that documentary. Um, yeah, so I just saw that. Yeah, what did you think? What I thought it was well done. Uh, I thought they threw Richie under the bus a little bit, but uh, I, I, I love the backstory. I, I love the details. I noticed they, they stayed away from a lot of the partying and a lot of the uh, yeah. uh, chicks having chicks around and, and uh, you know that sort of thing. But it, uh, it had to have been because it was executive produced by John Bon Jovi. It was yeah. pretty much more his journey, his surgery. Right. It was it was pretty much not really a Bon Jovi, but a John Bon Jovi story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it left out the really the big stuff about the parties. There um, yeah, there were no groupie stories or anything like no. that, which I know there are tons probably sure, but sure. Uh, I mean that was the two of them. That was the Yeah, deal. oh it was magic. Absolute magic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean I think that's a big part of what made Bon Jovi what it was. And that's one thing that I was surprised about in the documentary is how fast they threw that band together after John wrote that one song that, that got attention. Right. It was like, bam, let's get this band together. But he made the right choices, all of those guys. It's like they're it's almost like he's casting a movie. It's like you can't think of anybody else in those roles. You know? Yeah, no, exactly. No, um, yeah. Richie Sambora to me came across as the only rock star in that band. The rest, I mean, <laughs> that's he, interesting. He's, yeah. he's still got the oh, yeah. gypsy look. He's st you could yeah. tell he was half in the bag. He's still going for it. And here's the thing. Yeah. He knew his worth in that band. He knew what he brought to that band. But if you Absolutely. watch those interviews, he comes across more like Keith Richards and John Bon Jovi comes across as like a drug counselor or something. Right. Honestly. John Bon Jovi comes across. Sorry, Brady. And, and I no, love and I love John, by the way. I don't want anybody to hate on me. When I, I mentioned when I, I said that they threw Richie under the bus, if you think about it, they did everything. Richie probably was totally content. He was very wealthy. He's very well traveled. He did all of that stuff. He's happy with that stuff. Now he probably just wanted to kick back some uh and and didn't want to keep on keeping on as much as John did, and I don't you know should, that you, you can blame him for you that. You should live but. like a... If you're in a band like that, and you're out there, those 80s bands, man, yeah. this is way before... I mean, obviously, no social media. Yeah. No way the word's getting out unless the guy watching the door is going to oh. go, you know, yeah. talk to a rock mag outside. And trust me when I tell you this, yeah. John Bon Jovi did everything everybody else did, but he, Bon Jovi ran their machine with Doc McGee, almost like the mafia. Oh, see, that's that's why I think it's such a perfect storm. If you look at John Bon Jovi when he was young, you got the band, you know, the, they're all very accomplished, very uh, 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 skilled musicians, and you got the, the uh, management that you're talking about, and it's, how can it not work in that right. era? I mean, yeah. how can it not work? Doc could walk in here and say, Brady, I'm giving, getting you a record deal, and you'd have one tomorrow. He's that guy. Awesome. Uh, and he hasn't the, even heard you sing? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I've got a song. I, I, I've oh, got a song written, but I just haven't recorded it yet. Use the, use the phone right there behind Ray. <laughs> it's not hooked up, but there's just a lot of bands in the 80s that, I mean, yeah. did not make Yeah, one-hit wonders, and, and I guess... Well, even just like they just looked, I think it was a copy and paste thing, right? Sure. Like, trying, who's, the trying first, to... who's the first 80s band that people that took off and they're like okay we need four we need the next four of those guys is it motley crew no here's here's what happened mm. sunset strip and i've studied this so if you can poke a hole in this argument please do there were two eras of the sunset strip the early 80s had motley crew rat quiet riot and that influenced the second generation of poisons warrant uh firehouse but you had a few bands kind of go through the whole era like Bon Jovi, they were there from the beginning to the end. Back to Richie then, uh, 
what I've noticed and what I appreciate about his playing is he never tried to be Eddie Van Halen. I know that's a you know that that's kind of a place that very few people can go. But if you listen to his uh, guitar riffs, they're basic uh, and they're good and they're appropriate. They're musical. He wasn't trying to tap. He wasn't trying to uh, trying to to be another Eddie Van Halen or Ingve uh, or any of that stuff that was you know the the guitar gods back then. He was doing his own thing, or I think he was, and it was great. You know. 12 string acoustic guitar, double neck double guitar, neck, yeah. uh, had his own style. He wasn't ripping too hard. I mean, he's got some decent little solos and some breaks. A lot but of soul, a lot of blues, a lot yeah, of that, a lot of exactly. that East, East Coast blue collar kind of like right. just and man bringing, working. bringing the voice box back. Molly Crew, Molly Crew copied that right after that <laughs> song came out. Yeah, with uh, Dr. Feelgood. Mick <sighs> Mars was playing through a voice modulator. So yeah. we can agree then. We love Richie Sambora, but what I have to say is, let me just introduce this into evidence. Exhibit A. He needs to get the proper haircut, this guy. Look at this haircut. Oh, that. Oh, you, this you, is the, the, the new? I had really not oh. He, looks he may perfect. not have. He may not have much these days. Well, that's uh, what I'm saying. Don't you? Don't you just lean into it and say, "Okay, you know what? I, yeah, I, I I gotta let this go." Yeah, that's true. That's old man hair. He doesn't look healthy. Uh, it doesn't look. Well, healthy. he's he's uh, not healthy. That's why he's the biggest rock star of the band. <laughs> he, 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 to me, to me, to me, Richie Sambor. After watching that documentary, yeah. became my favorite member of Bon Jovi. I love. All of them. He's got a little attitude to it. But him. I love the vibe. Like he, when he sat down, it was a rock star. Yeah. Those big bands like that, those ballad bands in the eighties. Yeah. That could have a cast of characters that you almost know every one of them. Yeah. I think Motley Crue is the one that took that to where you, every single one of them, was pretty Mot much a character. Motley Crue were rock stars. As far yeah. as maintaining it, they're a nostalgia act now, and I love Motley Crue, yeah. but they're they're. People go there to remember the that era and remember those songs. And last week, uh, the, the, the Vince Neil face planted again last week. Have you seen that? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw that. I'll, I'll roll it here. Um, listen, I do not, I'm not coming down on these guys being in their 60s, going out there, hitting the road. The fact that Vince Neil is still alive, and I love Vince, is, <laughs> is a testament to human the human anatomy because that guy <laughs> all those guys should have been dead back in 89 oh well you also you look at it, it's like he still looks terrible but he actually lost some weight here i mean uh-huh here we go oh yeah he lost a lot of weight you keep your eye on it boom oh down goes frazier oh but you know what? He's a pro. He Look at him. He's a, he's a pro. He's like, I'm a rock star. I don't Look at all the phones. Yeah, Look at all the he phones. Up. Yeah. Like, so all check the, that out. All the phones go up, right? Oh. Here comes the EMS. Well, you know, Vince had a show before Motley did the reunion. And all he did was fall down? No. That's it, what they should do. They should dude, look, up, look up look up Vince. He should do this at every, every... Vince and the Weebles. <laughs> every, uh, every show, he just should fall, fall over. over. Look how much bigger he is. Yeah, four years yeah, ago. I mean, how do, how being do you, a rock star, how do you let that happen? I know. I mean, if you look at the posters of them when they were in their prime. You know that guy playing drums I saw on Independence Boulevard back in 92? No way. His name's Zoltan Chaney. I saw Alita Ford in a similar situation. What was she doing? I don't know. She was. She, uh, uh, she was. Was it a uh, Saturday night? A, was she going yeah, to a party? Went, it was like an event that she was like a record store event or something. No, I'm sorry, a music store event. She get in a fight? No, not that night. She didn't. A couple of years ago, internet's blown up that Vince Neil couldn't remember the words. He doesn't know so any here, of the words. Here it is, Harry. He's just making it up, bro. He doesn't even care. Ah. Uh, because if you want to hear somebody play the music you love perfectly, Motley Crue's not the band. <laughs> Which brings me to this, 1983. Oh, man. Listen to this. He's never, he could never sing. No, he was never a good live singer. His voice could sell records in the studio. And that's mm -hmm. all the, at the end of the so, day, live, they don't give a damn. So what I'll say is, I give it to him, 41 years the most consistent band ever still sound like shit. You know, we were talking about Richie Sambora. He 
was always in the tabloids with his personal life. And I didn't realize until this week that John Bon Jovi has four kids. In other words, Richie's life has been all over the place. And John Bon Jovi's personal life, it seems to have been in a capsule and and not put out there a whole lot. Yeah, he, no, uh, he kept it boring for a reason. Well, I guess so. Yeah. You, all, uh, you always heard in the music business going around that Bon Jovi was probably the king of protecting his image. Yeah. And, um, you know, and you look and he's able to make a 40 year retrospective because of that. Yeah. That came out so good because he has so much to draw on. But the thing is, is whereas like Motley Crue, they never cared about their image. They sure. just, they were like sex tape, that rock became it their out. image. <laughs> Overdoses, let's Vehicular yeah, rock it out. Bon Jovi, a lot of stuff happened behind the scenes. Nothing major, but he, he, yeah. he was like the most responsible best rock star of the 80s and he certain there's certainly a band i'll go down in history as one of my favorites mm -hmm. but richie sambora is the rock star from that band 